I'm Joe DiMatteo of the Ask the Pharmacist broadcast. I just want to take a moment uh, to thank you for visiting our website today. I'm going to take just a few minutes to teach you uh, some real important principles about a couple products, some key nutrients that I think you need to be keenly aware of. We're going to start with buffered C ascorbates um, or vitamin D or whatever. We're going to talk about buffered vitamin C. We're going to talk about vitamin D. We're going to talk about the role of probiotics. There's a lot of different probiotics. I'm not going to get into the this is specifics today of um, what constitutes good and bad probiotics. That might be a discussion for another time. I'm just going to talk to you about good probiotics when they're correctly made, when they're standardized, when they're grown in a good environment, a healthy environment. How do they impact your immune system? So the theme of this discussion today will focus around your immune system. How does vitamin D modulate the immune system? How does C upregulate your immune system in your leukocytes, which are part of your white blood cells, what does probiotic bring to the table? What do the lactobacillus rhamnosus strains and the lactobacillus acidophilus strains, these lactic acid producing good bacteria, how do they impact your immune system? So I thought I would just take a couple of very specific um, areas, talk to you about probiotics uh, in particular now take some specific concepts that discuss how they can modulate your immune system. Now we know good bacteria does a number of things. It helps to eliminate toxins from your digestive tract, from your colonic tissue, so it helps you to eliminate and process toxic types of residue. Number two, it reduces the growth of bad bacteria, fungus, etc., uh, parasitic-like activity in the intestinal tract. We know that it helps you process your cholesterol. So there are many other activities that probiotics do for you. But specifically today, how does it affect your immune system? So we're going to gloss over cholesterol, digestion enhancement, elimination enhancement. We're going to focus on the immune system. Journal of Pediatrics, 2009, in an August edition, done on 326 children in China, show that it reduced fever during the winter months, 180 days from they started sometime in November through spring, uh, maybe it might have been less than 180 days, four to six months, 72% reduction in fevers over that time frame amongst the 326 children that utilized multi-spectrum probiotics versus those that did not. 62% reduction in coughs, 59% reduction in runny noses. Now you might say, well, so what does it do? It, it reduces your ability to cough? No generalized theme for chronic nuisance types of cold congestion scenarios in the middle of the winter. Fever reduction, cough reduction, runny nose reduction all through that course of that winter in a Chinese population versus those that did not supplement with the lactobacillus acidophilus, the rhamnosa strains, the bifidobacterium strains. Number two, the American Journal of College of Nutrition in 2001 in April showed that there are specific immune systemic. Now when I say systemic, that means through the whole body. Not just that the, that the bacteria enters the gut and then affects, and it does affect the gut system within the lining of the stomach. But it has a systemic effect, your whole body. Systemic immune enhancing effect of a specific strain, lactobacillus rhamnosus, why we have a billion units in our probiotic essentials. 52 healthy middle-aged volunteers showed this that when they measured a specific activity, poly, polymorphonuclear sites in your cells, up 20%. Your NK killer cells, which have to do with tumor killing activities, increased, NK killer cell activity increased by 147% in the group that supplemented with these specific strains of good bacteria versus those that do not. An enhancement of what are called PMNs, an enhancement of NK killer cells, a direct systemic body-wide immune enhancing effect of specific strains of probiotics. Number three, Journal of Environmental Health 262 patient study showed that it reduced hospitalizations, lost work days, and sick days in 266 individuals that supplemented with multi-spectrum quality probiotics versus those that do not what they found specifically, there was a 55% reduction in gastrointestinal disorders, diarrhea, loose stool, GI upset, 180% reduction in respiratory tract infections, 
over the time span that was studied. Now, can I say to you that you take you know, a probiotic essential and you never come down with a cold, you never catch a virus, etc. That wouldn't be fair. What the literature does show us though is that it enhances specifically, systemically, your immune system. That's just touching on a few areas of probiotic essentials. Let's move over to vitamin D. Vitamin D, uh, started discussing vitamin D as far back as 2003 and the immune enhancing effects of vitamin D. Vitamin D has what we call an immune modulating capacity in the body. And what I really mean by that is, it has the ability to regulate your immune system. <clears throat> we find folks that have adequate 25 OHD levels, that's a vitamin D measurement in your blood. Folks that have adequate levels, but you have less incidence of autoimmune disorders and diseases, number one. Number two, it enhances, once again, systemic immunology. We know that vitamin D enhancement of what are called antimicrobial peptides is documented in the literature. So literally what it has is a direct, and I shouldn't say stimulating, but a direct enhancing effect on the immune system via what are called antimicropeptides. I'm not here to try to impress you today in discussing what is very technical information. That's not the, that's not the juice to this. I can't just sit here and tell you, well, it, it builds your immune system, or vitamin D, or, or specific strains of probiotics uh, enhance your immune system. I need to be able to give you these specifics, antimicrobial peptides, it may mean nothing to you. What it means is, is that it literally, the precursors to your immune system that help you fight virus and bacteria are systemically enhanced the more normalized your vitamin D levels are. What are the magic numbers? The literature showing on a vitamin D blood test, minimum of 50 nanograms per milliliter. Um, I believe that number will continue to rise. Anywhere between 50 and 60 is what we tell uh, most individuals we work with. I believe that number will be eventually accepted up to 70, maybe even a little higher. What is the typical range? 20 nanograms per milliliter up to 100. You must be midpoint or high midpoint at a minimum. So let's talk, that's some generalities about vitamin D. Literally I could do an hour teaching alone on uh, vitamin D's uh, um, physically immune, all the immune enhancing uh, properties of vitamin D, how it helps your bones, um, all the way down the line. But today, the focus of today is your immune system. Vitamin D, we know that there is a, generally speaking, in prostate cancer, a 50% reduction when men have vitamin D levels of 50 nanograms per milliliter and above. Women, approximately a 50% reduction or incidence is lowered by 50% or close, I believe it's about 48, 47, 48% with women that have vitamin D levels of 50 nanograms per milliliter and higher. Ovarian cancer patients were 3.7 times more likely to be deficient in vitamin D. In other words, if you looked at a population that had healthy levels of 25 OHD versus a population that was deficient, ovarian cancer occurred almost four times at a faster, higher rate disproportionately in the low vitamin D versus the normalized, not necessarily even high, the normalized vitamin D level. We know that right now there are 160 at a minimum, and there's probably more, autoimmune, different types of autoimmune disorders and diseases. Vitamin D can, and I used that word earlier, modulate. When I think of something that modulates you, you think of something that dials you up, dials you down, adjusts, or balances you. So an immune system that is deficient, vitamin D can raise up. An immune system that has a tendency to want to spiral out of control and become self-attacking and begin to attack your body, autoimmune, self-attacking, that vitamin D, when it's more normalized, reduces the tendencies for self-attacking conditions. Hence, I call it, it, call it or name it an immune modulator. This is not just about boosting the immune system. It boosts and yet down-regulates an aberrant or a dysfunctional immune system, hence immune modulation. One quick study uh, done in China, lupus patients, they found, this was just recent, probably at the end of 2012, that the more deficient a 25 OHD, a vitamin D level was, 
the worse the symptomatology, the worse the condition in those lupus patients. They secondarily found that the incidence of lupus was higher in patients with low vitamin D levels versus those with more normalized. Now again, from a scientific standpoint, could you say these are causal, that this is the exact cause, there's a direct relationship. At this point in time, I will not argue semantics, and if you happen to be of a scientific background, you may want to argue the semantics. I'm here to present the facts, the facts of how specific nutrients, when you know what you're using, you know the quality of what you're using, what enhancement, what benefit do they bring? I'm not worried about whether it's causal, whether it's causal or there's an association, the numbers do not lie. Let me read to you some basic information from a chart that shows that when you look at all cancers, when an, uh, that if an individual has, now this is a broad scale population, when a vitamin D level of 38 nanograms and above, there's a 35% reduction in all different types of cancers. And that's not even an adequate, that number should be, as I said earlier, 50 to 60. Breast cancer incidence, and a woman at 32 nanograms, or, or nanograms per milliliter, 30% reduction as opposed to someone that's very low. When you go up to 50 and above, over an 80% reduction in the incidence. And I have statistics on everything from ovarian cancer, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, type 1 diabetes, MS. 54% reduction in MS rates when an individual has an excess of 50 nanograms per deciliter and above. So you say, wait a minute, I thought you were talking about enhancement of the immune system. Yes, it raises the antimicrobial peptides. It helps your body to fight flu. We find that flu and viruses are much more virulent. Um, there are uh, larger scale uh, in mass attacks of viral uh, loads in individuals um, that have lower levels of vitamin D. You go through the winter with more adequate 25-OHD levels, generally speaking, consistently, your immune system fares better. You will fight off colds and infections better. You will fight off viruses better. Now you begin to combine multi-spectrum good bacteria such as probiotic essentials, a good form of D3 taken with meals, get your levels up to normalized levels. You are looking at very two key components for systemic immune enhancement. I hope you're enjoying the teaching that we're doing on vitamin D buffered C ascorbates and probiotic essentials and how they enhance your immune system. I want to remind you that they are 20% off currently all three of the product families that I've just recommended and reminded you of. I'd now like to take you to a recent radio broadcast where we teach even more in depth. So I want you to stay tuned for this and at the end of that we're going to come back and we're going to continue the teaching on D, probiotic essentials and buffered C. Stay tuned. 67.55. We have a tough question here with lichen planus. we got Charles on the line. Charles, that's a toughie. Is that your question? Yes, it is. I was diagnosed about six or eight weeks ago, and about the same time, the guy told me that I was vitamin D deficient, and he, and he prescribed D3. Okay. They wanted to do a biopsy to make sure there was not some malignancy involvement in the oral lichen planus. Yep. So I went in yesterday for the biopsy, and the guy said it had improved so much there was no doubt it was lichen products and it could be no malignancy involvement. And I wonder if it wasn't substantially due to the addition of the D3 to my <laughs> diet, as you talked about today. I, I couldn't figure why it would have gotten better. I, I, <laughs> I love so then, it. I love you, it. You mentioned it today, and... Uh, I'm going to jump all over it. I've been uh, taking yeah. about 4,000, from yes. two to 4,000 a day. I mean, lichen planus, uh, this is a tough issue. Lichen planus is, is some type of immune dysregulation, but it's also been linked to everything such as folks having dental implants done or having some type of dental procedure where there's new materials in the mouth triggering and antagonizing. Um, the immune system and the mucosal immune system. Number two, uh, even dental amalgams have been associated. Mercury um, in the teeth. 
um, yes. yeah, and and so on. But overall, uh, we we sometimes make up some oral rinses, some things like cyclosporines and so on. But what we also try to do is have people use vitamin A and lots of vitamin D. Uh, once again, to, I don't. It's almost like this is a vitamin D day, and I want to make it a vitamin D day. <laughs> But but it, it, the reality of it is that's a very powerful issue. You say, look, they go in, this doc diagnoses me with what he believes is lichen planus, pretty specific appearance, no question. Um, he says, you know what, you're, you're, you're vitamin D deficient, let's get you on some D. You start pounding the D, you go in and do the biopsy, and they're scratching their head um, as to the change that's already taken place. Um, right. I believe it's more than coincidental. I don't believe it's coincidental. Remember, I talked about boosting the immune system today with D. But here's a very, very key component. Vitamin D is not only an immune booster, it's an immune modulator. When you think of a piece of equipment or a, an instrument that modulates or adjusts and regulates up and down, what we know is that vitamin D adequate levels reduce the incidence of autoimmune diseases, of which I believe lichen planus falls into that category, some immune derangement. Number two, we know that vitamin D upregulates an immune system that's deficient. So literally, it brings everything back more to kind of a central point. Uh, it's, it's a modulator. It's a balancer. So in your situation with an immune derangement, maybe a quasi-autoimmune condition, um, D acted uh, as a regulator, a modulator of the immune system. Very unique nutrient. Very unique. Yep. I appreciate your show very much. I uh, am a juicer, and I do a quarter fresh vegetable juice every day. Love it. And uh, I think it helps. I'm 80 years old and doing fine. You're 80 years old. You think it I helps. I sure am. You're doing At least. juicing. And <laughs> At least. <laughs> you know what? God bless you, brother. That's all I can say, man. You're 80 years old. You do juicing. Um, you, you keep doing what you're doing. It does help. I believe that when we give our body the right things, um, our body responds accordingly. Certainly, there are exceptions to the rule. We know that. It's not 100%, but no doubt, you take care of your body. You put right things in, live foods, live enzymes. That's why I tried to defer a few moments ago in saying, look, I'm talking to you about probiotic essentials. I'm talking to you about buffered C. I'm talking to you about D3. But I'm, I'm telling you there's more to this picture. There's also about how we sleep, how we eat, what we put into our bodies. Um, we have to consider that no different than the Bible teaches that we have to consider the whole council. We can't make an entire gospel out of one particular phrase, you know, an eye for an eye, tooth for tooth, right, you know? Um, but, but we know that there's times that we must show mercy as well, but there's a time that we also have to be very black and white in our approach. The whole council of God, balance. God bless you, man. It's great to hear from you. I appreciate it. Thank you very much, Joe. I appreciate your show, brother. Have Thank a great you. day. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, let's go to Janet in Penn Hills. Has some questions about vitamin D. Janet, you're on. You're right up. You're right in my neck of the woods. You're a couple of miles from me here. Exactly. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I'm sorry. I have a vitamin D question because I just heard you say you didn't want to make it a vitamin D day. No, absolutely. You don't. Don't apologize for having a vitamin D question. That's exactly what we want. If you have a question, let's talk about it. No question. Okay, uh, like the other fellow, I had blood work done and my vitamin D was low. Mm -hmm. uh, now, you did mention a D25OH. Yeah. Uh, they did that on the D3 and D2. Okay. And um, my question is, how do you know if to take a vitamin D supplement sure. or a prescription that the doctor gave? All right. Well, you know, for example, um, that question of what's what's what particular lab are we looking for? We're looking for the 25-OHD, which is the D3 form. Uh, the 25-OHD, the D3. We don't we're not. I want to say we're not concerned about D, but ultimately your body wants to convert D2 to D3. That's the active form in your body. So um, I want to know what the end product, the real portion that my body is going to use D3. So I'd say depending on what your number was of that 25 OHD, the, the range typically runs anywhere from 20 nanograms on, on laboratory findings all the way up to 100. So I, I don't know where you were. If you're in the 20s, you, you've got to do minimum four to 5,000 units um, a day. You're in the teens, 
you might be up at 10,000 units for maybe 60 days and then cut it down to 5,000 units. Um, my preference is D3. <clears throat> so your question specifically is what's the form, D3. D2 is the synthetic one. Body has to convert that. And I'm not denying and not saying that you can't raise your levels uh, by using the D2 or the synthetic form, uh, but I'm not sure why we would do that. I'd use the D3. It's cholecalciferol. It's the body-ready form of D3. Um, you just have to get the dose right depending upon what your, what your labs were. Okay, that word sounded like the one I have here, ergocalciferol, but it says vitamin D2. No, er, yeah, ergocalciferol is vitamin D2. Col, uh, cholecalciferol, C-H-O-L-E, see, it comes from cholesterol. See, that's how the body, that's how you make vitamin D in your body, by the way, from cholesterol in your skin from the sunlight, from uh, ultraviolet rays. Cholecalciferol is D3, so you want a D3 form. Okay, because my number was 17. Bad. Bad, bad girl. That's low. That's very low. Right. I All would right. say to you, D3, cholecalciferol, 10,000 units a day with a meal, with your food. Um, I would do that for 60 days, and then maybe you can cut it down um, to the 5,000 units. You're, you're, you're at a body-ready form with D3. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Uh, so that is a supplement or is sure. that a prescription? No, that's over the counter. That's a supplement. We have it here. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a bottle. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, it's a supplement form. Um, there, there's no need to have to do the prescriptive forms in these cases. It really is. Okay. All right. All right. So there's a chance that it's going to come back up. Oh, yeah. Right? Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. And it should come back up. And if it doesn't, uh, there's a reason for it. If it doesn't, it might be that you're a little deficient in boron, and we could absolutely take care of that as well. Um, but there's no reason why your number doesn't come back up. Okay. Well, you answered my question, and I thank you very much. Thanks for calling, Janet. God bless, and have a great day. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Bye. Absolutely. 877-655-6755. Let's go to Chris in Kentucky. Chris, thanks for calling. How can I help you today? Hey, Joe. Maybe you already uh, answered my question with your foundation blocks you just mentioned. I don't know. So, uh, no, I just had a, after 1030, I, I don't know if that was the reason why, but I kind of had some chronic sinus problems. That I don't really see a primary care, so I'm kind of using you as a first stop, but um it's never associated with mucus. I mean, it very rarely has ever become an infection, but it's almost to where it'll trigger a migraine, and it's always on the right side of my face usually, even behind my eye, and I, it's in my nasal passage. But like I said, it's never associated with anything directly that I know of, so I didn't know if you had any recommendations for healthy sinuses or uh, anything like that. Yeah, so. I mean, I, I don't know that I have anything specifically for healthy sinuses, and, you know, maybe eventually or you, you allergy. Right. Right, or, yeah, exactly, or more allergen response. Um, when I think of someone that's battling, and even though you don't have, like, a, a lot of post-nasal drip, and you don't yeah, have a that. what's that? Yeah, it's not that. It's not, you know, post-nasal drip from a cold right. or flu or anything right. like that. So. Well, it, you, you might, do you feel like you have pressure up in your sinuses? Yes. Yeah. Well, a, a lot of times you're not draining well. There's not movement through the sinus as well. So the ABCs, in part, see, I believe over the course of time, many times, we develop more allergies to things, foods, environmental issues, etc., simply sure. because um, many times our adrenals are blown out. We're, we're just blown out, whether it's work, life, kids, home, finances, stress, our adrenals are weakened, and when our adrenals are weakened, our immune system is weakened because our immune system is tied directly to the strength of our adrenals. But if I think of a of, of something real basic for you to do, first of all, you should get checked medically and, and rule out and make sure there's nothing going on because obviously there's migraines that are starting and you fill it up behind the right eye and the right part of your head, and you, you should be checked You know, medically. Uh, I would recommend uh, that you do that. But on the flip side, what you can do in the interim is you can work at doing the basics of boosting your immune system to make yourself less susceptible. So good bacteria, we know, good forms, viable forms of bacteria reduce our allergen response, number one. Number two, you do some high doses of the buffered C, you raise the immune system. 
I don't believe there's a D link to sinuses, at least that I've ever seen. But that is at least a basic approach. Maybe if you do dairy, you try to really minimize your dairy for a period of time. Um, and kind of try to watch the amount of chemicals that you consume in food because many times they um, they are a trigger, certainly as well. Okay, and you, you said something too. That I think there's a correlation too, though, when I lack when I lack sleep, that then the next morning I'll feel that pressure. So, and you mentioned the adrenals. I think that I mean we could almost maybe make a direct correlation to fatigue and lack of rest and stuff like that it might. Weaken that immune system and trigger inflammation. I don't know. So. Well, it, it it what you said at the first part is exactly right. I mean, I always believe what I what I talk about every day. The body uh, very complexly made, and and we um, we have to think about all different aspects. Bottom line to that thinking is is that when we don't sleep well or get enough, we will compromise our body in some way. Many times, our immune system is weakened. Um, and it allows it allows for things to creep up. So whether or not you have an infection or not, the only way to know is you have to have a physician look up into the sinus passages, etc. But um, I'm not surprised that if you've not had good night's sleep, or maybe you've had a couple nights that have not been good, you're more prone. Adrenals being weakened, the immune system, an indirect innocent bystander, a domino effect. So that's why I often say. Uh, the best thing that we can do is try to lower the load. L don't add, you know, logs to the fire. So if I can cut back sugar, cut back on the amount of dairy, I, I boost, I use some, like, probiotic essentials, I get on higher doses of the buffered C ascorbates, maybe you even get on to some enzymes to help. Enzymes, proteolytic enzymes are really good sometimes for chronic sinusitis issues. Um, you just do the ABCs, you know, you just try to do the ABCs, and if you're not sleeping, we got to get you to sleep, because and poor night's sleep, and then you're prone. Sure. One more yeah. quick question, all because you're talking about probiotics. Uh, I also battled diverticulitis uh, mm -hmm. a couple times here at the age okay. of 30. Will your probiotics help in preventing that? Um, diverticulitis. Um, what that is is just so we know it's it's a well, diverticulosis is an outpouching where there's literally an outpouching in the colon wall and in the intestinal wall where literally um, there's a weakening in the wall structure and foodstuffs and seeds and et cetera uh, undigested food part particulate can get in there. The best thing that you can do to prevent diverticulosis or diverticulosis going to diverticulitis, which is an inflammation of those pouches, some of the best things you can do is um, plenty of fiber in your diet consistently. Food sources of fiber, really critical. That's what my doctor said. He said, pretend like you're a horse and just eat, eat like a horse does, tons of fiber and... A ton of fiber <laughs> and, and good bacteria. And yeah, back to you. Help, so Absolutely, yeah. Be because right. they aid in the elimination, and you eliminate more efficiently. And what it helps you to do, here's the key: it helps you to produce something called short-chain fatty acids, fiber, and good back bacteria help you to produce SFA, SCFA, short-chain fatty acids that have to be on the colonic wall, and they are all about maintaining colon health and colon structure. Probiotic essentials, lots of fiber. That's the best thing you can do to prevent. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try your, I'm gonna try your probiotics, and I won't keep you. But uh, I've tried some before, and they caused immediate cramping. So I didn't know if that was just because I bought the wrong brand, or if people are more prone to that if they're not used to that being. It, it shouldn't happen, person. and it shouldn't happen if they cause cramping. And I, I would, being fair, to, I don't know who that manufacturer is, but being fair to them, it doesn't mean that they're poorly made. It doesn't mean that they were bad per se. But sometimes what happens, that's an indicator sometimes that someone has something growing <laughs> that's not real good in your intestinal tract. Yeah. If there's an immediate roar of bloating or distension or cramping, that's yeah. showing that there's a warring faction that is happening when you ingest good bacteria. Well, I, well, I had that, so is it something I should just grit through and continue? Yeah. Maybe with these probiotic essentials, you start really low. Maybe it's one after dinner for like a couple of weeks, and then maybe then go to two, but you start real low with one. All right. All right. Yeah, thank you so much for all your time. I didn't mean to take so much. God bless you, man. Thanks for calling. God bless you. Appreciate it. Thirdly, one of my favorites and has been one of my favorites for probably 15 years, buffered C ascorbates. We recommend only an all L ascorbate. L ascorbate meaning 
that there are two different forms. It gets, it gets in the chemistry, the R and L forms. You really only absorb well the L form. Ascorbate, meaning that it is bound to minerals. We do not recommend the mixtures of vitamin C. We do not recommend acidic forms of vitamin C. It should be pH neutral, completely buffered. Why? It enhances systemic absorption, utilization at a cell level, reduces the kickoff or the excretion of the vitamin C as quickly when it's in an ascorbate form. It's in a body ready form. Vitamin C, just some basic issues. Enhances endothelial function, the circulation, your arterial walls, your arterial beds. We know that it raises nitric oxide production, actually helps the small vessels and vasculature to relax. We actually know that high doses of the buffered C ascorbates, and literature proves it, that you can actually lower an individual's blood pressure but via what's called not only nitric oxide raising, but also what's called by biopterin action. It actually has a relaxant effect on the vasculature. Now those are issues that relate collagen matrix and so on. But vitamin C used regularly through the winter months has also systemic enhancing immune-like activities. We know that it does one issue in particular, one key component, raises cellular energy. I talk about that all the time on the broadcast. Number two, it has a direct immune enhancing effect, which I'll talk about, but it has an indirect mechanism via enhancing the body's ability to repair. Remember, your immune system has two key components to it. Number one, it is to defend against invading bacteria, virus, cancer cells, etc. Number two, it has an effect on repair. So the better your body repairs when you have adequate ascorbate levels in your body, the more active and the more balanced your overall immune system. So it's an indirect method. A direct method would be what was proved in 1990, and this appears in the annals of the New York Academy of Science. And what they showed, there was a direct ascorbate mediated immune stimulation. There was a direct activity when folks raised their ascorbate levels, their vitamin C levels, the, 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 not, I don't know what form exactly they used, when they used higher levels of vitamin C, what they found is there was better leukocyte activity. It was raised, and leukocytes are your white blood cells. It's part of your immune system. There was raised activity in your leukocytes. There was enhanced ATP production within your leukocytes. Now, what is ATP? Within each of your cells in every part of your body, whether it's your liver, whether it's your, whether it's your brain, whether it's your kidneys, whether it's your white blood cells or red blood cells, you have mitochondria. Within those mitochondria, the energy producing units, your body is desiring to produce ATP to keep the cell healthy, to keep the cell functioning. They found that when they raised the level of ascorbates in these individuals, their leukocyte ATP energy production enhanced. Hence, the leukocytes, your white blood cells, were more active at defending you and fighting you. This is right in the literature. Folks, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this time. We've talked today specifically about the ABCs, and there are a lot of other aspects of how you can enhance the immune system. I often say on the radio broadcast that it's always about the ABCs. Today, the role of vitamin D, the role of buffered C ascorbates, and absolutely understanding the role of probiotic essentials and multi-spectrum types of activity. For right now, during a limited time period, we're going to be having these products individually at 20% off. They're available on our website. I thank you and I appreciate uh, you coming to the website today. I hope and pray you continue to listen to the program and we're going to be doing more of this type of teaching, Lord willing, in the future. God bless you. Thanks for visiting our site and I hope you come back soon.